the Quanchung UVK5. Let's check it out today on this side of the radio. The Quanching UVK5, a new HT that's come on the market, came out uh, in March of 2023. It, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty standard for your Bofang type radios, I think. This one's um, got some aggressive styling over the, uh, the speaker. It's uh, 200 channels, um, 20, you can store 20 FM stations in there. You can do uh, AM, Airband, we'll do some tests on that here in just a few minutes. And weighs about uh, 240 grams, fully assembled. Now what sets this thing apart, it has a wideband receiver on it. So with the function button, function one will cycle through the different bands that you can listen to. So from six meters, you can go from 50 to 76 megahertz, from 108 to 135, 9975 on AM. 136 to 173, 9975, 174 to 349, 350 to 400. I mean, it goes it goes as far as, as anything you'd want to listen to, honestly. The antenna, however, um, well, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's try. Inside the antenna, um, it says that it's set up for 136 to 174 FM and 400 to 480 megahertz FM. So the antenna is only good for two meters and 70 centimeters, but the radio itself will do uh, quite a, a wide array of things. Going around the radio, it's pretty standard. Your push to talk button is here and you have two function keys that can be assigned. Uh, they have a short press and a long press function. Both of these are going to set off an alarm. One and two are both going to set off an alarm um, when you long press them. So I'm going to save your ears from that. But if you short press the top button, opens the squelch, and if you short press the bottom button, it turns on everyone's favorite feature, the flashlight, and you get two modes. <laughs> you have a protected on-off knob, and then uh, the side here will be your normal uh, Kenwood style for you to, for an external microphone and for a pro programming cable, and then you have USB-C uh, charging. Now the manual says to charge in the cradle only, but and to only use the USB-C as an emergency way of charging. Uh, coming in the box, you get a very handy dandy wrist strap, a charging cable, the radio, and the antenna. The menu system is pretty uh, intuitive. The menu button is at the top. And I like the fact that they put all of your repeater functions at the top. So the first part of the menu is all going to be uh, that stuff. Turn that down. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, and then it gives you the option to save uh, that into whichever channel you'd like. Vox. It gets down into, now this, you'll see WX, that does not stand for weather. A lot of people may mistake that. That is for the uh, dual watch feature. Um, go back into there. I've got that turned off, of course. Um, your DTMF things are in the back. Scanning is a little different. Um, so to in order to scan something, you have to select a list. I've got list one selected currently. Um, this particular radio doesn't have anything programmed in it, but we're going to fix that here in just a second. I like the over-the-air uh, copy. But uh, so you would, whichever channel that you're on, uh, you can save it to each individual uh, list, and then you can scan that list by holding, when you're, in, when you're in memory mode, by holding down this star key down here. Uh, when you're in VFO mode and you want to scan, you just do the same thing. You just hold on, hold down on that button. I lied to you. There we go. Hold down on the uh, star key and then it will just start scanning through the bands. I like that the the buttons are, well for one they're backlit, but for one it's kind of uh, intuitive here and some of your quick functions that you'll be using most of the time is going to be accessed directly here from the keypad. Uh, function 2 will switch between that, the uh, A and the B uh, channels. Um, function 3 will switch it between either VFO mode or memory mode. Of course, we have, if you do function scan, that's going to pick up a CTC scan. So say if you're out with your buddies and you want to find out what everyone's talking on, uh, you can key up and the CTC tone will show up down there. Let me see if I can demonstrate that for you. Just tune the VFO to the frequency that they're on, then hit function and the star key. And then when he keys up his radio, it will tell you what tone he's got. 
and it'll also do if he's doing uh, DCS tones as well. Uh, if you want to do a total scan, uh, if you don't know either one of them, you can hit function four and then hit key up. And sometimes it reads the harmonics, <laughs> but it does give you the right tone. So it's a cool feature, but it needs a little bit of tweaking. So let's move on to the National Weather Service um, frequencies. So you want to make sure that in the menu, you go down to the bottom and that you have uh, NOAA scanning on so that when you activate the NOAA or the, the NOAA in option five, it'll find the strongest signal for you. But you'll hit function and then five, and then you'll see NS up in the top of the screen saying that it's scanning for the NOAA frequencies and you can't hear them until you hit the function button at the top. Adjusting to 22. Elsewhere around the region, Wichita Falls. Which is a cool South feature. 83, southeast at 20. Abilene. Next on the menu is function six and that will is a quick function to let you change the power. You can tell what power setting on by looking right underneath the frequency. So you change that goes to low medium, and high. Uh, function zero will bring up the, will pull up your uh, FM stations. Uh, function seven is your Vox. Uh, function eight will be the reverse. You can hear the repeater's uh, input frequency. And if you hold the F key, it will lock, it will lock the radio. So let me get these radios set up and I wanna show you what the over the air copy looks like because if I, if I turn this on, you'll see it's just, Nothing's changed, and if you go to memory mode, so function, and we're gonna go down to memory mode down here, I don't, there's nothing really programmed in there. That's just frequencies that they put in. So let me get this set up and I'll show you how the uh, over-the-air copy works. All right, so if you look at these radios, uh, one's programmed, this one is programmed, the other one is not, and I've got channels programmed in there. I hope you can see that. But I wanna copy this radio to this radio since uh, this one has nothing in it. So to access that menu, you turn the radio off, you hold down the, the bottom function button and the PTT, turn it on. All right, now it says to, to input a frequency. So we're in the United States, so we're gonna use 420-420-000, and then you're gonna hit the exit button. So that says that this one's gonna be the radio that's going to be copied to. So in the radio that you wanna copy from, you do the exact same thing. Hold the bottom button and the PTT. Turn it on. Make sure the frequency is the same. And then on this one, you're going to hit the menu button. So you hit menu, and there it goes. If you look at the two radios, it'll say sending five, receive five, and it's going to run all the way up until it uh, does all of the memory channels. Now, I'm not, it'll do all 200 of them, even though I don't have something in all 200 of them. So I'm gonna fast forward until we get to the end so that you guys don't have to sit here for 10 minutes. All right, I'm back. So that took about uh, four minutes to do all of them. Now, remember the radio here on the left didn't have anything programmed into it. So we turned these on. Now it has my logo and all of the memories are there ready to go. So that's, I thought that was a really cool way to uh, to copy one radio to another. Now, unfortunately, it only works with these these same radio. So hopefully this will become a standard in the industry where we can do this over the air copy between different brands. So now I know the question is on everybody's mind and is how clean is the transmitter? So I'm going to show up on the top of the screen a couple of screenshots from when I put this on the spectrum analyzer uh, and it does show that it, that it is creating a little bit of uh, spurious emissions. But I wanted to show a test where I actually demonstrated whether or not those could be detected in the radio. And uh, so we're going to start by Tuning this radio here is tuned to 200, 293, and then the, this radio is going to be tuned to uh, 439.5. And then I'm going to transmit on 146.52, and we'll see if the radio can, can pick it up. So what we're looking for is for an indication on the meter, and if the screen lights up, it broke the squelch. And I've got the squelch on both of these radios set to uh, 1. So they're not open, but it's the lowest that we can get. So let's do this. I'm going to transmit close to my face. This is K5QBF testing, K5QBF testing. Now I did see the meter move on both of those radios, but I didn't see the light um, come on on the screen. So we do have a detection of those, the spurs, but it was, wasn't strong enough for it to break the squelch. 
So now I'm going to hold the radio next to in between the two and let's see if we can get them to uh, for it to actually break the squelch. So 146.52 and I'm on high power. K5 QBF testing. Oh, there it is right there. So it did open the squelch on the first harmonic. That's a shame. Well, that's a fail on the spurious emissions. Now, this goes to show you that the radios would need to be right next to each other in order to cause that interference, but it is something that I will be emailing the manufacturer about to let them know that, hey, uh, we need to put some filtering on this. So let's talk about the airband function. To get to those, you're gonna go to menu, and you're gonna go down to the bottom and turn AM on. This one happened to be defaulted on because I copied it from my other radio. And then in VFO mode, you'll tune in to your closest uh, tower or controlling facility. Uh, mine would be 124.3. And of course, when you're making a video and you're trying to demonstrate something, it didn't work. So the receive audio on that is is okay. I will say the closer the aircraft is to me, the uh, the more distorted kind of the sound is. But if the if the aircraft is farther away, it is. Uh, so the receive audio on that is is okay. I will say the closer the aircraft is to me, the uh, the more distorted kind of the sound is. But if the if the aircraft is farther away, it is. Um, it is easier to understand. So here's my final thoughts on the UVK5. I like the radio. I like the fact that it has airband at the price point. I think there needs to be a little bit of work done to the AM reception. Um, and I also think they needed to, to, to handle the spurious emissions. I think that's two simple fixes. If they were to even to raise the price point by a couple bucks or you know per unit, um, they would still make the radio worthwhile and we would have a clean radio. Um, but overall, I like it. Uh, I'm picky with the with the battery. Um, it's a lithium ion battery, uh, 1600 milliamp hour. Uh, but this dead gum to get this clip to hit this off. You if you change batteries and want a belt clip, then you have to lift that tab. And that unless you've got fingernails, which I don't, that is a pain to get off. So uh, overall, I think it's a, it's a good start. This is the first version of it. Uh, maybe they'll have some. Um, some firmware fixes for it. I don't think that's going to fix the spurious emissions. I think we're going to need some filters on that, but but uh, I think it was a good start and, and thinking out of the box on a couple different things, uh, the AM band, the over-the-air copy, things like that. So uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. And if, it's, if it's something that you want, I can't use three of these, so let's give one away. So if you will put down in the comments the word handheld, the word handheld, all one, all one word, handheld, uh, I'll draw a random person within a couple of weeks and I'll send this radio over to you free of charge so that you can enjoy it as much as I have. If you found this video interesting, give me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you like content like this, consider hitting that subscribe bell. There's going to be a couple other videos that pop up up here and we'll see you next time on this side of the radio. Have a great day.